The compressor is the heart of the system and is located within the outdoor unit, which can be an air-cooled or a water-cooled VRF system. The outdoor unit will serve multiple indoor units, with each VRF manufacturer limiting the quantity of indoor units connected to any combination of outdoor units. The VRF system varies the flow of refrigerant to each of the connected indoor units based on the needs of that unit, allowing the system to adjust the volume based on demand. Each indoor unit uses an expansion valve to control its refrigerant supply to match the cooling, heating demand of the space it serves. The outdoor unit also varies its output to match the total demand of the total indoor units. The compressors come in various quantities and types based on the VRF manufacturer and system tonnage. The most used VRF compressor types are the rotary and scroll compressors. The heart of the rotary compressor is the cylinder which houses the piston and vane. The vane maintains constant contact with the piston as the piston rolls along the inside wall of the cylinder. As the piston rotates, gas is compressed into an increasingly smaller area until the discharge pressure is reached, releasing gas into the shell chamber. At the same time, more gas comes in through the suction port, enabling a continuous process of suction and discharge. The simple design and symmetry of the cylinder components combined with a special coating and premium materials provide a highly durable and reliable product, rotation after rotation. Here is Toshiba's rotary compressor, which uses twin rotary technology, which can completely restrain excessive and deficient compression, making it highly efficient. The Danfoss Inverter Compressor solution for commercial HVC applications allows a VRF system to modulate the cooling capacity precisely between 25% and 100% when a single compressor is used and between 12.5% and 100% with tandem compressors. The unit adjusts to the varying loads that the building needs during the day. VRF Digital Scroll Compressor. The Copeland Scroll Digital Compressor is capable of modulating its capacity from 10% to 100%. The compressor is supplied along with an external solenoid valve. This normally closed de-energized solenoid valve is a key component for achieving modulation. When the solenoid valve is in its normally closed position, the compressor operates at full capacity. When the solenoid valve is energized, the two scroll elements move apart axially. During the unloaded state, the compressor motor continues running, but since the scrolls are separated, there is no compression. During the loaded state, the compressor delivers 100% capacity and during the unloaded state, the compressor delivers zero capacity. A cycle consists of a loaded state and an unloaded state. By varying the amount of time of the loaded state and unloaded state, an average capacity is obtained. For instance, in a 20-second cycle, the average capacity is 75% if the loaded time is 15 seconds and the unloaded time is 5 seconds, 15 seconds being 75% of 20-second cycle. By controlling the capacity with a sol solenoid valve, the VRF compressor motor avoids the unnecessary wear caused by frequent start and stop cycles. 
This method is 30% more efficient than hot gas bypass or suction throttling. As the chart shows above, the longer the solenoid valve is on, the less capacity the VRF compressor delivers. If the solenoid is open for seven and a half seconds, which it shows on the chart, this equates to half the cycle time, 15 second cycle, then the compressor capacity is 50%. Seven and a half seconds in a 15 second cycle is 50% capacity. VRF compressor configurations. You will find a minimum of three versions of VRF system compressor configurations. There's the single variable speed compressor. The compressor will ramp up and down depending on the demand of the indoor units, but won't have any backup if there is a compressor failure. The second option is using multiple compressors. These VRF outdoor units can contain two or more compressors and provide redundancy if one of the compressors fail. The VRF controller will sequence the compressor for optimum energy efficiency and shared runtime. Various VRF manufacturers use a mixture of variable and fixed speed compressors in their outdoor units to handle the indoor unit demand. VRF manufacturers may have two or more fixed speed compressors with one variable speed compressor. VRF compressor duty cycling. When the VRF system contains more than one compressor or connected outdoor units, multiple outdoor units connected together, the system has the capabilities of optimizing the runtime of each compressor. This ensures that all the compressors sharing the hours of operation instead of using the same compressor each time the unit comes on. This should extend the life of the VRF compressor by sharing in the total run hours. Some VRF system compressors will rotate operation between outdoor units to ensure system efficiency and shared duty. This means that some outdoor units will be off while others running. Then during the next duty cycle, the unit that was off may now be running, while the previous unit that was running is off. Various versions of these scenarios are used by the VRF manufacturers to provide optimum efficiency, compressor longevity, and proper sharing of the runtime for each compressor. VRF compressor backup operation. Under the same conditions above, where you have multiple compressors or outdoor units, the VRF system can provide partial capacity in the event that one of the compressors or the outdoor unit itself mal malfunctions. VRF outdoor unit capacity. The capacity of the VRF system is rated per AHRI 1230 to establish its integrated energy efficiency ratio, which looks at the summation of four values of various running capacities at 100%, at 75% capacity, 50% capacity, and 25% capacity, which is one full load condition and three part load conditions. And here's the formula. So it shows that 100% is A in the formula. They consider it running at 100% only 2% of the time and running at 75% capacity, which is character B in the formula. They consider it running 61.7% of the time at 75% capacity. 23.8% of the time it's running at 50% capacity and 12.5% of the time it's running at 25% capacity. Efficiencies are higher and energy consumption is lower when running at reduced capacities. So this will be optimized across multiple connected compressors by running them at part loads before running one compressor at full load. 
as the formula gives the greatest weight to running at 75% load, followed by 23.8% at 50% load. Larger capacity systems are achieved by mating several smaller units together. The use of inverter duty compressors in electronic expansion valves, EEVs, provides a method for stable temperatures and pressures in addition to energy savings. The speed of the compressor will vary based on the cooling and heating demand from each indoor unit, which has an expansion valve regulating the flow of liquid refrigerant for cooling or hot gas vapor for heating. The pertinent information from the positions of the EEVs and the indoor sensors is communicated to the outdoor unit, which makes an adjustment to the volume of refrigerant flow in the system and the speed of the outdoor fan required to meet the existing conditions. For digital scrolls, this would affect the loading or unloading cycle time. With the Daikin VRV4 system, you can choose the temperature response speed. As the outdoor temperature increases, so does the evaporative temperature. The response can be very fast, fast, or medium. The compressors contained within the various VRF manufacturers' equipment is often manufactured by another company, one that specializes in compressors like Danfoss or Copeland. The use of VRF systems and the various compressor types will save on energy and provide the following benefits. Precise cooling and humidity management, low startup current, a soft start, energy efficient, low noise levels, and variable speed, of course. There are other characteristics of a VRF system that contributes to its ability to reduce energy consumption besides its variable refrigerant flow or its variable speed and capacity modulated inverter duty compressors. This includes the use of multiple compressors or multiple outdoor units, the use of ECM motors on the indoor fans, and or variable speed drives on outdoor unit fans will also vary based on the cooling or heating load. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.